Network troubleshooting using Wireshark. Today, we're going to look at how you can detect TCP packet loss in Wireshark and quantify how severe it actually is. So packet loss is what happens when certain packets are dropped on the network between a given source and destination. This could be due to hardware issues like cabling or bad optical components, um, could be due to network congestion and buffering, could be due to software bugs on your devices, etc. One of the easiest ways to tell if a performance issue is caused by the network is to quickly analyze a packet capture to see if packet loss exists. So before we go further, a few notes. Number one, we're going to look at detecting packet loss in TCP protocols. You could look for packet loss in certain UDP protocols using Wireshark, but since UDP uses unreliable transport by design, it's much harder to do. Number two, some packet loss is actually okay. Packet loss will happen in most networks to some degree. So the question is what percentage of packets are actually lost in a given stream? Protocols like TCP have retransmission mechanisms for this very purpose. But at a certain point, the performance of a given stream will plummet if the loss is too high. I'll be showing you how to estimate how many packets are actually lost in a given stream. And number three, packet loss should be analyzed between a given source and destination. When looking at a capture, it is more useful in troubleshooting to filter on a specific source and destination than just looking at a wide open capture and seeing how much loss is there. If there is packet loss somewhere in a network, it likely won't affect all flows, especially if you have a large enterprise grade network. So all that being said, let's look at the files. So the scenario is as follows. We have a PC connecting to a server over SCP, which is on TCP port 22. And for whatever reason, we're experiencing slowness. I've also noted here that the capture point, meaning where we actually took the packet capture, is on the PC. Now, for this illustration, that's not going to be that relevant. But when we get to some advanced cases, when we're trying to identify where the loss is coming from, that will actually be very important to note. So the first file we're going to look at is of the file transfer to the server, but with no packet loss. So I want to use this opportunity to show you just a few um, tips on how to actually isolate the traffic. So first things first, if you're not getting into very deep analysis where you're going into uh, the details and the, the dissection of each packet, then you can get rid of this for now, just so you have some more real estate. So I usually just do this. You can do the same thing from the view menu. It's up to you. Now, if you take a look at this capture, this is a wide open capture from the PC shown in the, in the diagram. Uh, wide open means I didn't put a host filter or a capture filter, sorry, on the traffic to only filter certain types of traffic uh, into the capture. I capture everything and then afterwards I can filter it down. Depending on the scenario, you may decide to uh, use a capture filter uh, to limit the file size, for example, but I tend to like to use wide open captures where I can and then filter down later because there should, could be pieces of evidence in traffic that you didn't think about that are part of the problem. So the first thing is I want to isolate down to the IP communication between my PC and the server in question, which was 10.0.10.150. So there's a few ways to do that. The first would be to enter an IP filter here. So IP.addr is equal to 10, 0, 10, 150. And then we have our traffic. Now, this isolates the client and the server down to the IP layer. However, you can see here that it's not just port 22 that's being used or uh, SCP. You've got some DNS traffic going between my IP, which is dot 43 and the server, which is 150. You have um, here looks like it's SSH and potentially other uh, protocols as well. So one of the ways that I like to narrow this down is actually to use the statistics menu. 
and then go to conversations. So conversations will break down all the traffic and allows you to look at the different layers within OSI. So you can look at all the different layer two conversations going on, layer three, and then TCP UDP layer four. So in this case, for example, I want to look at a or narrow in on a layer four conversation, which is TCP. So I'm going to go to TCP. And then from here, uh, you can see between my IP and a bunch of different destinations, there's a lot of traffic. I know that the traffic that I'm looking for is likely going to be the one with the highest volume because I was doing a large file transfer. So what I'm going to do is quickly come over here and sort this by bytes. So this is total bytes sent and received of the TCP stream. And you can see right at the top, here is my IP to 150. My local port is 15502 and the destination is port 22, which I want. And as I thought, the total volume is 320 megabits, actually bytes. Now uh, to filter down in Wireshark to automatically create a filter for this, I can right click on the conversation, apply as a filter, select it, and then A to B. And if I go back to my window, it's already constructed for me a filter that filters both on the IP and on the port. So I'm now looking at a layer four conversation, which is TCP, as opposed to all traffic between this source and this, this, this destination IP. So I have my conversation. Now I can look through this for signs of packet loss. Um, and in this case, it looks pretty clean. What Wireshark will do is actually flag any TCP anom anomalies or um, other anomalies it detects with colors. So for example, coming up on a packet here, you can see here we have a spurious retransmission and a duplicate ACK. This is how Wireshark would actually um, flag that traffic. Now, for me, it's not enough to just do a visual to look at the traffic and say, hey, this looks pretty clean. I actually want to be able to quantify the amount of errors that I'm getting. In this case, I'm looking for packet loss and retransmission. Now, I use the term packet loss and retransmission here a little bit interchangeably. In TCP, when a packet is lost, being sent from a client to a server or a server back to a client, there are mechanisms used to resend that packet after either a certain period of time or after it is signaled through a mechanism like dupl duplicate acts to resend the packet. So when there is packet loss, we tend to see retransmissions. And that's why when we're looking at Wireshark, what we're actually looking for to detect packet loss is retransmissions. So here's an example of one, a spurious retransmission, but there's really just one. There's a duplicate act following it up. Um, this may be out of order, but that's okay. But generally speaking, I don't see much packet loss. Now, if I wanna quantify this, what I can do is as follows. I can see that in this total capture, I have 278,000 packets uh, in this stream. Actually total. Displayed, I have 273,745, perfect. So of this, if I wanna now filter down and look at just what of these packets, how many we retransmitted, I can add on to my filter. So I'm gonna do an and and. TCP.analysis.retransmission. And so this is going to go through that whole stream and pick out what packets were retransmitted. In this case, there were nine. So the total was something on the order of 270,000 packets. Of that, only nine were retransmitted. Now, I mentioned to you in the introduction that Retransmission is, is kind of a fact of networking. You'll see retransmissions on almost every stream you look at, especially with you have, when you have large file transfers. However, um, the question is how much? And in this case, if you're looking at nine out of 270,000, you're looking at a negligible amount. That's like 0. 0.000 something percent retransmission. So even though these packets potentially were lost between source destination, it doesn't really matter because TCP retransmitted the packet 
and the stream was able to continue. So this is the good case. Let's take a look at the bad case. So now I have uh, a different file open, this one with a connection to the same server, same IPs, but there's a little bit of packet loss induced in the connection. Um, and right away, if I start scrolling through this capture, you can see those black lines that I mentioned um, that are fairly prevalent. Now, with Wireshark, you should be both subjective and, uh, or at least, you should be able to look at a capture visually and assess relative uh, importance or non-importance of certain things. And you should also be able to use the tools to quantify that with numbers. Um, so what I mean by that is that right away I'm scrolling through this and I can see there's a significant amount of loss, right? Um, just by a glance. And it, also on the right hand side, you can see there's black through this little scroll bar, which would imply that there are many different air, uh, packets where Wireshark has flagged it from one reason or the other. It doesn't necessarily mean a problem, but to me, this immediately gets me thinking, okay, let's dig into this a little bit deeper. And you can tell by looking at the clean capture how different they are, right? So if you're in a rush, it's nice when you have a lot of time to sit down and do packet analysis for hours. But if you're in, say, the middle of a P1 issue and you need to get it resolved, sometimes those visual cues help you a lot. So I'm going to go back to statistics. I'm going to open up conversations. I'm going to look at my TCP conversations, sort them by bytes. I'm going to get to the topmost one, which was again, be, uh, actually, no, that's the wrong, not the right one. This is the one that I want. Now there was a few, there were fewer packets captured in this capture versus the previous one, but we can do the same analysis because it's re we're looking at the percentage of packet loss, not necessarily the volume. In this case, the source port is 15611, destination is 22 again, and uh, there's about one megabyte, 1.2 megabytes of data. So I'm gonna right click, applies filter, selected, AB, come back to the cap. Now, we're gonna take a look at something here. First of all, there are 1400 packets displayed. I'm gonna take a little note of that for later. And again, scrolling through, you can see all the black lines on the right-hand side, and there's quite a few here. So let's try to quantify this. Now I'm gonna use the same filter as before. I'm gonna to add to my filter and tcp.analysis.retransmission, which is looking through just this stream for retransmissions. And you can see I've got quite a few now, 113. So. I'm noting that down as well. I'm gonna do a little bit of math. So we have 113 packets divided by about 1400 total. That is 0 0.08, that's 8% packet loss. That's significant. So if there was an issue with this, trans with this transmission, like if a user was complaining or if you notice slowness, Packet loss is likely part of the root cause of it. it. May not be the whole root cause, but just with this quick analysis, you could say in the one case that we did before, hey, this stream looks perfectly clean. There's maybe 0.000% packet loss total. And in this case, you're looking at it, you're saying, look, of all these packets, of the 1400 packets transmitted, you know, 8% of them were dropped and had to be retransmitted again. Now, I will post some resources in the video notes that describe more about what percentage of packet loss is actually considered bad. Because again, a, a negligible amount um, can be recovered from, but when, when you hit a certain point, uh, or if you have latency above a certain amount, TCP becomes unstable and the, your throughput just goes through the floor. But hopefully this video has shown you some quick ways of identifying where packet loss exists within a capture. In future videos, we'll get into some more advanced topics like now that you detect packet loss, how do I actually find where it is and what's causing it? But for now, we're going to stop it there. That's it for this video. I hope you found this video useful.
If so, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have an issue that you're working on and you would like to review the capture on the channel or get some advice, feel free to post a link to it below with the description and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time.